I messed up. I designed this postcard. The problem is, is that I was supposed to design a poster. Technically, I did design a poster, but somewhere along the way, I changed the size so that it would fit a postcard, and then I saved over the poster file. Print resolution being what it is, I can't take this 4x6 postcard design and turn it back into a 24 by 36 inch poster. I'm gonna have to redo it. You're gonna watch. Couple things about this. Number one, because I've already done it once, it should go pretty quickly. Number two, I'm gonna work back to front. So we're gonna start with the background and then work forward. Number three, because some of these elements are type related and vector based, uh, those should be easy to just pull over from my other document instead of having to recreate those. That's that's a plus, but I am gonna have to re-hand draw these shapes, these uh, citrus shapes, and then I I don't even remember where I found that tear thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to find that and redo that or figure it out. Infinity Photo, new document. I need to have a little bit of a bleed because this is getting printed at a traditional printer. 24.25 by 36, nope, 6.25 at 300 DPI. Switching this to CMYK. I don't need a transparent background. Bring my margins in at 0.5. That didn't work. 0. 0.5. Actually, I'm going to compensate for that eighth of an inch all the way around. So we're going to go 0. 0.625. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place the original document so that I can, you know, pull some of these elements that I said will scale up and also grab this for colors. So there it is. But this one came in as flattened. So I double click this over here. It leads me to the layered file. I can grab these elements from this one later and drag them back over here as needed. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. First thing first. Create a new layer for the background, new fill layer. Drag that below that. Eyedropper, pick that color, bam! Now the next thing was this gradient and I just did that by creating a new layer and then I just put a gradient on top of that. New live filter, colors, half tone. Change the angle, cosine, bring this one down a little bit, bring this, these up a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna change this up a little bit from the previous di design to this one. I'm gonna soften this up a little bit like this. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and merge that down. Throw in a threshold, that way I get a little bit of this grit going on, a little bit of gritty edge there. Now, of course, I need to colorize this. I don't think I can do this with recolor, but let's give it a shot. Oh, that kind of works. And merge that down, and then just hit on that, multiply. It's a little bit dark, so I just come back here, and just lighten up the opacity. Weird kind of halftone things going off the edge. Enlarge this a little bit, stretch it out just a tad. So now there was also a texture on top of that. Let's go find a texture. I think I use Granite Noir on this one. If you're not familiar with Granite Noir, basically it is a build as you go granite based texture. You have different types of textures in here that you can build on top of each other to create new and interesting effects all by just dropping in the different effects there. If you wanna go check it out, there'll be a link in the description. Now, I'm looking for something that kinda of has a, a consistent kind of tone and texture to it, so this one actually looks pretty good. I guarantee you that this one is not gonna be as big to fill this background. It's big, but it's not that big. That's okay, because I'm just gonna stretch it out. Now it looks a little soft. Gotta rasterize the image. Filters, sharpen, unsharpen mask. Just kinda play with this until I find something that I like. Going a little bit extreme there, but that's okay. Okay, so here's the problem. This is very black and white, and that black and white is going to create a weird contrast. So no matter whether I go multiply or color burn like I've got here, it's just gonna create this stark contrast to what I've got going on, and I don't necessarily want that. So we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did with the halftone. I'm gonna change this to normal. And then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna recolor, finding something that kind of works. Command J to that group, turn that one off so I can have it gone gone. Rasterize and trim. And magic. I'm gonna back it off a little bit. I just want a subtle texture, but I do like what's happening right now. So I'm gonna bring it down underneath that half tone and kind of let that half tone overlay on top of that. Sometimes it's just about where you put the layers. Is it ham first? Cheese first. Ham first? Cheese first. I don't know. You decide. Definitely ham first. Since this group isn't really necessary at this point, I'm gonna bring it down here to the bottom just to kind of like say, hey, this down here, this is the cellar. Everything goes in storage there. Below the ham and the cheese and the bread. It's like the napkin or the cabinet Did you drop the crumbs in. What am I even saying? Examining the card, I think we're gonna go ahead and take care of this sucker right here. This one came from Tender, which is my distressed paper color textures. I know I have some, ooh, there, yeah, is that it? Yeah, in fact, I think that's the exact one I used. Uh, problem, still very small. In large and in charge, kinda want this line to be a little bit more linear, which obviously means it's gonna be, I'm gonna need to enlarge it even more, which is a problem, guys. We shouldn't really be enlarging too much like this. Gotta be done sometimes, so I need to get rid of all this extraneous stuff. Coming here with this one here, the selection brush tool. Kinda like magic wand something something. We're just gonna select at rando. Zoom in a little bit to make sure I'm hitting those lines exactly where I need to, like dismissed it right there. I can put a mask on it, but I'm just gonna rasterize and trim. Delete. Now to create that little bit of depth that you see, uh, it's obviously we need a drop shadow. 
FX. I'm gonna look at this spot right here because it's gonna give me the kind of relationship I'm looking for because I want the shadow to kind of come down and you know, this particular direction. Outer shadow, click that sucker like that. Bring that radius out like that. Not too much because I don't want a lot of radius but I do want offset. The difference between radius is how far it kind of glows out then offset is how far it's moved or shifted in whatever direction that you see fit. Kind of just moving it down to so I see something that looks a little interesting. It feels a little soft to me and the way I can change that is by coming in here with the intensity. But then I got to really kind of, I don't know, it just feels a little odd. It just looks a little too digitized and I kind of want to have a little bit more grit. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to do a command click so I create a selection there. And in that new layer, let's actually drag it down below. I'm going to fill it with black. And maybe that's going to look a little too digitized too, but I've got a plan for that too. I'm going to move you a little bit like this, kind of down this direction. I'm just tabbing with my arrow keys. It's not bad, but it needs a little bit of fuzz because it still needs to look like a little bit of a shadow. Gaussian blur. And that fuzz is still a little weird to me. Let's multiply. That'll add some interest. One thing about this one is that it was more pure white. Levels on top of that. Drag it into there right there. Go this way with my gamma. Go this way with my white. It's like going the opposite. Why is it doing that? That's so weird. I think it works different when you're in CMYK than it does in RGB, which is bizarre. Since I have these elements open already, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this one. In fact, I'm just going to go I'm going to select this layer with the type, bring it over here, command V, boy is that small. Stretch, bring it down a bit, bring it in a bit, look at what we got here versus this, we're looking pretty good. Also going to bring in this type down here. Now granted, this is going to be huge when it prints, it's 24 by 36, it's, you know, it's wider than those things back there. That's a lot, that's a big poster. This type doesn't have to be super big, should be big enough for people to see as they're walking by, but it doesn't have to be gigantic. So here's the thing, I actually drew these when I was in Affinity Publisher when I switched over to the Affinity Designer Persona and I'm not in Designer, I'm in Photo. So I'm gonna have to go over to Designer to just draw a couple of shapes and then bring them in. That is exactly why I like to design things in Publisher so that I don't have to keep switching between apps. I just click the little button at the top and just jump, baby, jump, not a big deal. These are pretty rudimentary shapes that sort of look like fruit. I'm gonna use the pencil tool just to create a basic circle shape. Now I probably should be using my tablet for this, but not that I did that before. I just kind of like drew something that kind of looked like a circle. Now I can just copy this over into photo and it's still gonna maintain that it's a vector. So I'm gonna command C, command V, bring up our file again, yank that color out of there. I am gonna add some texture to it here and a little bit of shadow in a minute, but uh, not yet. I want to get these uh, sized up and good. I also need to create a secondary one behind it. Command J. I'm gonna make that one white. If you look at this, the shape is actually not congruous. It's not like the same shape just repeated. I actually, what I did is I tweaked it and turned it. Tweak and turn. It's gonna look better once I get the texture on that orange. In fact, I want a little bit of a stippling effect, you know, cause like, you know, an orange peel has like that stipple effect. These paper textures actually do have some really good stippling to them. Again, I want something that has like a continuous kind of feel tone a hue to the paper so that it you know it doesn't look like it's got like weird bumps and divots all over the place but it's a little too great so let's go command l drag it in there like there like a mask now this all make better sense once i put the you know the, the blending mode on top of it overlay ah see now look at that it's trying to change the change the tone don't necessarily want that color burn that works two things number one you can still see the layer of the whole texture in the background we don't want that number two i'm going to repeat this on top of the lemon so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a duplicate of this just going to hide that one for now and on this one what i'm going to do is command and click my orange on top of that paper layer right there i'm just going to hit a mask make sure i drag that mask into that layer right there and now i've got it masked up so that it's only hitting what why does this have a stroke i'm going to have a stroke in a second oh because i have a there we go Remove that stroke. I might as well do that on the white one too because I'm pretty sure the white one's got one. Yep, white one's got one too. Don't want that. I, I don't think my shadow here with my paper texture is quite hitting the way I want it to, so we'll play with that in a minute. But let's just keep this as is. I'm gonna go ahead and group all of those orange aspects together. Orange. Now let's repeat that whole process for a lemon. <laughs> I already duplicated that texture, so I'm just gonna throw that sucker on top of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't compensate for that kind of burn shadow thing at the bottom, so we're gonna have to do something like that. I might just create a layer on top of the orange part, then click that, create a blank layer, and just kind of come in with a darker orange. My shadow's coming this direction, so the light's coming from there, so let's just do a little bit of like thisy this. Something like that. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna burn that too. Whoa, that's a lot. I think I need to soften it up some. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna mask that one. Not a lot, just a little. 
Trying to keep it real. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the lemon. I think I need my orange and my lemon to take up a little bit more space here. Now this is a little weird things that, that kind of drive me nuts. See that little gap right there? Between, you know, you can see the background coming through. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. Move that up like, like that. Maybe making some adjustments so that, you know, that the words and stuff looks a little bit, you know, better together. I think my paper edge is probably too far over. And then again, my I need that shadow to be a little bit better. And I think I am gonna go back in and soften that sucker up again just looking a little too harsh. There we go. It's not exact, but it doesn't have to be. This is going to be a poster. This is obviously a postcard. Compensation just for size relationship alone is enough. It works, and now we're gonna go get it printed, and then the show's gonna come. By the way, if you happen to be in the Long Beach area on May 21st or 22nd, I'm gonna be in this art show with all my friends, and it's gonna be a good time. That's a poster for you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, make sure you go down to this, uh, the comments and ask me. Ask me things. While you're headed down there, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you did enjoy the video, hit the subscribe button. Button. And if you do hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the bell because you never want to miss any of this. Speaking of not missing any of this, check out that because you don't want to miss that one either. Be good today. Be better tomorrow. See ya.